I'm going to record this now. <laughs> and um, we do upload them to YouTube later. So you will, guys will be able to review this um, uh, after class and, and see if you miss something. Okay. So kind of starting with the first question that I've got in my list is um, um, understanding everything that the site can do for us. Um, Really the point, just kind of at the basic level of your website, is to generate leads and to help your clients be able to either get information that they're looking for and, um, and encourage them to contact you as well. So again, that goes back to the leads. Um, some functionality that we've got, um, if we do have IDX coverage in your area, um, real quick, are we, am I, do I have a lot of real estate agents today, mortgage brokers, or is it a mix? That way I can kind of make sure I'm sure that the same thing. Because um, I was also looking at the names to see if I recognized anybody that I knew for certain was a mortgage broker, but I think we may have primarily agents. That's cool. Okay, so we'll, we'll do agents, and if, if somebody's a mortgage broker and you want a mortgage example, just speak right up and we can get you one. Okay. Um, if we have IDX coverage in your area, you've got the IDX widget here. This is one way that you can capture your leads. Uh, this layout that I'm on is one of our premium options. Um, our standards also have the IDX layout. So everything I'm talking about, you're going to have on your site, whether you paid for a premium layout or a standard, because this is just kind of the cosmetic homepage, if you will. Um, so... Can we move on? That's one. Oh, no, apparently I do have to have a pointer. Well, that's silly. Um, so some other things that we do have as well is we've got um, widgets down here for some of the layouts that you can use um, where you can have related links to things, um, mortgage calculators, things for people to interact with on your site. Um, other features that we have, and I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, actually, let's just let's just start from scratch with the basics. So, first thing you guys are really going to need to know once your site's been set up is how do I log in to control all of these wonderful things that I'm about to show you. Um, you're going to go with whatever your domain name is, inbound marketing, and it's going to ask you to log in. Yeah, sorry, I had to reset my uh, browser earlier today, which is why my, my passwords aren't populating the way they're supposed to, and I probably didn't type that incorrectly. Okay. Hopefully it'll behave this time. Normally, it doesn't take long. Sorry, guys. Um, there we go. Okay, cool. Excellent. So, this is your dashboard. And before we go into how you can edit your site content, create your own custom pages, and all of that, uh, I'm going to cover kind of this page first. This is your initial dashboard. Um, across here, you've got kind of um, the tenets of an inbound marketing philosophy, which is what we, we teach here. Um, sometimes it's referred to as content marketing. What it really means is making your site the magnet that's going to draw the type of customer that you're targeting to you, so you're going to get a higher quality of leads um, that get to the closing table more often. Um, so that's um, so through that you have to publish good content to uh, that's going to show up in search engine results. That includes blogging. Um, if you're not a writer, record a video like this. Just answer a couple of questions. You can very easily make a two to five minute video with your phone um, and the video functionality on it. Doesn't have to be fancy. Um, you know, your listings, things like that. And having all the great content in the world is awesome, but you got to pr uh, promote it a little bit. 
because unlike Field of Dreams, if you build it, they won't come because they won't know to come because the internet is so big. Um, so that's where we're, why we have the promote tab. Um, capture is going to be where you're going to do anything that has to do with putting like a lead capture form on your site, how to create those forms, um, setting up some of the ebook landing pages that are part of the platform. Um, those are really, really good. So if you don't have an ebook landing page on your site, um, I would suggest uh, doing uh, creating one. So I will, uh, Jordan, if I don't hit that, make sure I hit that today. Because that, that's one big, very easy thing to do on your site um, that, that can help you get more leads. Um, nurture is where you've got the email uh, marketing campaign where you can set those up, um, where you can almost kind of set some stuff on automatic uh, if you have things uh, set up well. Um, and then analyze. There's not really much here that's not already right here. Um, but you do want to look and see um, if you've got the lead manager. Um, we don't really cover that in the scope of these classes because um, if you are a broker and you have lead manager, um, we actually do have a team that does help specifically with that. Um, but this is where you can get in to see you know, how your lead sources are doing, how your agents are doing. Um, this website performance is pretty much right here, so you don't need to click on that. Um, Going down just a little bit further, this is where you can get some at a glance, because I know that was one of the questions that was asked, is it's kind of covering this traffic. Um, anything in gray is going to be the direct traffic to your site. So that's um, anytime somebody's typed in the URL, which is the web address up here. So anytime I say URL or web address, this is what I'm meaning. Um, you can, oh, I'm going to try this again, see if this works. Um, uh, the, yeah, the direct is just going to be anybody that, if they click on a link in an email, type in your domain, that's what it is. Something to be aware of with this number, though, is this does not actually filter out spam bots, unfortunately. So um, the ones you really, really probably should be looking at and, and caring a bit more, um, because if you're doing well with your organic and your referral traffic, um, then this is naturally going to be higher because there are some legitimate um, visits in here. It's not all spam bots, but unfortunately we don't have a way to set, sort that out right now. Um, you can also set up Google Analytics on your site, and there's a really good article um, by Luna Metrics that um, shows you how to set that up to where it filters out your spam traffic. So that's a good route to go if you want um, higher analytics than what's right here. Um, to kind of cover referral and organic, referral is anytime another website is linking to yours. So let's say you wrote this really great blog article that um, a, a local restaurant blogger or somebody decides that they want to cite as a source or a, a comment or a related article to what they've talked about. Um, they would link to your site and then that becomes a referring link so anytime somebody's on on their you know food blog website or something like that for example um, then they click on that and it's going to take them to your site so that's where a referring link um, these you really want to try to cultivate good ways to cultivate those are if you've got prepared vendors that you work with um, whether that's um, contractors, uh, builders, trade professionals, title companies, mortgage, appraisers, home inspectors, you need a list for days. Um, I would recommend maybe having two or three vendors per category that you're doing though, um, just to make sure that it's, it's kind of fair. But you can link to their sites on yours and just work your network, ask them to you know, return the favor because that's going to help. And you want to cultivate links that are within your own industry um, primarily, uh, just because those are going to be seen as a higher link value um, authoritatively to the search engine ranks than um, your, your cousin that lives three states away linking to you on their gaming blog. That, that doesn't really make sense. Um, so, so that's 
something there. Um, another good way is write a pro bono article for your newspaper and ask that they link back to your site because search engines love news sites because it's unique content, it's relevant and up to date. Um, newspapers are going to love you because they didn't have to pay a staff writer to write something and they're getting it straight from an expert. So win, win, win for everyone. Um, the organic is going to be how many people found you through search engine results. So they click, they did a Google search for, um, you know, buying my first home in you know Oklahoma City or or whatever your local area is. Then your site comes up. You've got a page. They clicked on it. Um, wound up here. That's what um, organic traffic is. Um, going down here, you can see what your most visited pages have been in the last 30 days. So if you've got a specific page that's getting a lot of action, um, or you can see a lot of our listings pages. And this is a sample site, so I, your data will probably be a lot better than ours is. Um, and then, oh, yeah, I am going to have to go back to the cursor. Okay. Wish there was a hotkey. Anyway, um, and then the promoter campaign. So you can see, you know, how many email emails you've sent out, how many people have viewed it, how many have actually clicked the links that might have been in it to go to your website, and how many have opted out. Um, I I can expand this out to get a per um, campaign. Right now, I've only got one running, um, but that way I can see how those are doing at a glance without having to log in. Uh, this section here for the inbound links, this is um, how I mentioned earlier, um, cultivating those referral links. So this is just another way of saying referral link. Um, this lets you know how many sites are, uh, what page on your site they're linking to. So it may not be directly your home page. Um, if you are cultivating your network to do those preferred vendor pages like I talked about, um, it may be your home page or if somebody's saying oh, hey this person has great information on the home buying process and then they link to your nine steps to owning page for example then it would have slash nine steps to owning so you can really kind of figure out what pages not only are doing well um, but who's out who's linking to them um, and you can again use this data for your business um, and see over time how they've grown or how they've dropped off. Um, and you can also see when it was last checked. It's updated about uh, 10 times a year. Since this is a sample site, we probably haven't had this one updated, but the other one, um, yours should actually have real data in it. This is just something that's kind of there. Um, on down to here, because um, this is going to take us into our next step for the setup. Uh, You've got, it'll pull in your Twitter and Facebook if you have them hooked in. Um, you can also see when you've been posting things to social media, um, what they've been uh, looking like. So um, you'll see how this is, you know, looking for a good way to boost marketing, download this, and then there's, you know, something there. Um, this is also where you can see scheduled posts. Um, right now we don't have anything scheduled, so we'll cover that uh, later as well. Back up to the top. Um, this is where you can click to see your um, your new thing or your actual website. Oops, for some reason it's opening is secured. All right, there we go. There we go. So that way we can leave that there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click this arrow up here, and we're going to hook in social media profiles. Um, since I now actually have profiles that I can use with class instead of using my own, we're going to switch. So this is a good time to show you guys how to do this. And we're going to remove that. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Okay, yeah, the, the, the question about the dates is um, 
that I actually don't know. I never, I apologize, I never noticed that before. I'll, I'll need to figure out what's going on with that with our developers. Um, yeah, because I don't see how you can have future traffic. Um, Jordan, can you uh, make a note or, or send that to me in our uh, our, our internal uh, um, Slack channel so we can, so I can investigate that after class is over? Um, okay. So, social media profiles. Just making sure I'm not missing any other questions. Okay, cool. So, to hook in the social media profiles, um, the first time you try, if you try to promote something to social media but you don't have this step set up, it'll prompt you at this point. Uh, but I'm just covering it here. So, to connect your Facebook, click on Connect Now. Um, I'm already signed in here, um, which is why I pulled in both my per both my personal profile and my business page. Since I generally don't want to share things to my personal profile because that's usually best for friends and family, um, I'm going to only have my page set up. And then I'm going to click here. We're going to sign in. Going to pull in, making sure I'm in the right account, and we're going to authorize it. If you're not already signed into Twitter, it will prompt you to sign in. Um, I would recommend at least setting up a Facebook and Twitter, even if you're not going to use both, just so that way you can reserve your your company name uh, with that and, and hook it in if you decide to. All right, so we've got that set up. Um, going back to the basics, let me kind of scan back through these questions just to make sure that, because um, if I can kind of mix the answers to some of them together, I want to try to do that. Um, okay. Yep, okay, I think we're good. All right, so delving into your your day-to-day -day site maintenance things. Um, whenever we build the sites, you do have we do have some provided content that's already going to be in there. For example, for buyers, we've got nine steps to owning, several different pages. So you're going to have a site that's going to have information. Um, where you manage that is going to be um, website content page. Um, what I would recommend um, and kind of the difference between what you would use as a blog post versus a page um, is anything that you make a page on your site needs to um, generally be a, a bit evergreen. So it's not necessarily um, going to be something that's going to become outdated at some point even though you can go back in and, and update it. Um, general information or uh, that's specific to a target audience is good. Um, so let, let's take a look at what you're already going to be set up with. Um, all I did was under publish, went to website content page, it's dropping me right here. To turn a page on or off, you just simply check the box and then hit save. Um, you may notice that there are some of these that have the little arrows chasing each other. So let's go ahead and um, this is indicating that the page has Ghostwriter. Um, the pages that come enabled on your site when you buy it by default are all going to be Ghostwriter pages. What is Ghostwriter? You may ask. I think it's best if I show you. Um, Search engines really do not like duplicate content. Again, they're looking for something that is unique, relevant, um, and I'm bringing a little notepad here so I can do that. I think what did it do? Yep, it always creates it behind there. Okay, so now that we've got a little notepad here, I'm going to demonstrate this. So let's pick. Let's not give you guys seasickness. So what I'm going to do is, nope, 
it has to be a cursor. I am going to grab this this first little sentence here. So there are certain normal costs accompanying closing the sale of a house. Now I'm going to tell it to rewrite the page. And what it will do is it will go through, um, and you'll see it kind of changed a little bit here, um, that there are, you know, this sentence right here that we're looking at. It changes how it is phrased, and it will spin, and it will do that throughout the entire page. It'll change out words, entire sentences, sometimes even paragraphs, um, images if there are images. Um, this is how we ensure that when you buy a site from us, your content is not going to be exactly the same as anybody else's. There, I've, I've actually had to go in and edit some of these before to add new things to them. Yeah, the the combination possibilities are astronomical. <laughs> Um, so you, you won't ever have the same content as anybody else. It'll still say the same thing, but it'll all be worded differently, um, which is what you know, search engines try, try to look for, too. Um, you can, um, where this is a beneficial, so a time-saving um, idea, is instead of, since your site does need to be updated every so often in order to be um, seen as relevant by the search engines, um, you can click these, uh, let's see, we're on closing costs, and actually set it to where it will rewrite itself every 90 days, 30 days, 60 days, all the way out to 180. Um, you aren't able to go below 30 because you really don't get necessarily extra points for, um, for updating more than that, your, your site pages. I would recommend blogging if you're wanting to update your site more than once a month. Um, but you can kind of set these at certain times. I would stagger the intervals so I wouldn't, for example, set them all to 90 days because then you'd have a bunch of your site rewriting itself all at once. You don't want that. Um, just because it looks a little suspicious to the search engines. Um, so click on apply and so now every 90 days this page will rewrite itself without me having to touch it. Yay. Um, things to be aware of, do not ever enable it on your home page um, because it will pretty much, we've done custom coding here and it will completely rewrite the page. Um, so don't, don't turn it on for your home page, but everything else is fine. Um, so with this closing cost, let's say I decided I wanted to go in and add something to it. So let's go back in. Um, actually, I think it's still up. Hang on. Yep, there it is. Um, so I want to let me scoot this out a little bit so you can see. Yeah. I'm just throwing a sentence in. Um, and this works just like a word processor. You can edit. Any, anything in there, including our provided content. Um, so you'll notice it, how it was turned on out here. So now what I'm going to do, since I've edited the page, I'm going to go ahead and save and close. And then now if I refresh this, you'll notice that it's turned off the Ghost Rider. Um, that is actually something that happens by design because if you've gone to the trouble to you know, customize a page like that, uh, a little bit further than what we started you off with, you don't necessarily want Ghostwriter overriding that because it will take that information out. Um, so it's something that if you don't plan on doing much to the page, leave it on. If you've actually gone in and customized it, the system will turn it off for you. So, you don't, um, so you'll want to kind of look at that before you go on, especially if you've had your site with us for a while. Um, and that's just something to be aware. Okay. So that is how you can edit a page. If you're wanting to create a custom page, um, highly recommend, especially if um, to create content for a niche or something like that that you're targeting, 
Um, so for example, we do have a first time home buyers page and some nine steps to owning information. But if you really wanted to get specific about um, kind of drilling in the real cost of renting or something like that, and you wanted to create more uh, targeted content for that audience, this is where you would do it. Uh, you just come in here, click on add new, and start typing away. Or just like a word processor. Um, I'm going to open up one of the pages that we've already got going on just so you can see one that's got um, some information in it. So with this we have a couple of different options. Oops. If I wouldn't click off of them. Okay. So here's, here's where some of these optimization strategies are going to come in. Because the number one thing that matters is what content is on your site. You want it to be relevant, useful, it needs to answer a question somebody's got, um, or address a issue that they're having. Um, whether that's uh, knowing where to get financing, um, how to hire the best agent, uh, you know, is it really possible to renovate and buy your very first home? Didn't know that when I bought my first home. Now, thanks to shows like Property Brothers and most HGTV right now, people are aware of this. But not everybody watches those channels, so you could always do that. Um, yeah, um, the browsers that seem to work best with these changes is um, you can use it in Chrome. Um, so I would recommend probably doing that as well when you're in the back end. Okay, so some optimization things. So I've just pretty much typed this out. Um, actually, hang on, I'm going to, okay. So this would be if I just was typing something out to, to write an article. Um, so top 10 things. First thing you want to do is make sure that on your pages you've got a, a heading. I would usually recommend a heading three um, on your pages. You can do a uh, heading one because depending on the, the style, whoops, because um, all that does is it, um, it kind of signals to the search engine of, hey, this is the most important thing. And for your human viewers, which you really should be focusing on first, um, it helps draw the eye to the focus instead of just having a wall of text. So where you can with your content, it's usually best to, you know, you can write all the information out and then um, adjust it for people that are going to be skimming. Because think about your own behavior on the internet. If you're going to read an article, um, you're going to kind of probably skim through it first just to make sure that the information is relevant and then you'll, whatever hits your attention, you'll focus in and where they've expanded on the topic. So you can use that same, keep that same behavior in mind when you're writing your pages. Um, so for example with this, you know, I've got my headline. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to make it a numbered list. Um, you can type because you can use these bold and underline. Um, for each of the first items, I want to make it bold, so I'm just going to do that real quick. So that way the, the first sentence is going to stand out because that's what's going to catch someone's attention. And then I can write sentences about it, and I can have you know, two or three or four sentences of content underneath each one of these points. And, you know, it, the search engines can see and index all of that, um, which is why it is worth doing some of the additional content. But then the people that are going after the content are going to be able to be like, okay, yeah, I want to learn more about Bricktown. And so they'll read on that section. Um, so that's one optimization strategy. Um, two, you can also create links. Uh, between your pages, which I highly recommend because that encourages people to engage with your site more and search engines do keep an eye on how long once somebody goes to a site, how long somebody stays on your site, especially if you've got that Google Analytics code in there. 
Um, and one of the ways to do that is to have links that, that'll kind of create a journey through your site, if that makes sense. Um, so for Bricktown, we do have a page already built that has listings from Bricktown. So I'm going to link to that page. My selected content and non-selected content. The difference between these two, um, and this is where the custom links is. Uh, let me grab this. So this is where I am. Do not my selected content is anything that's showing up in your navigation. So the one we're linking to is downtown Oklahoma City. Um, and since that's showing up in my content, that is going to be my selected content downtown Oklahoma City. And I just click that and it sets it up for me. Excellent. Um, so that's one way you can link. Um, if I were to be linking to um, another site, the way you create the link is you highlight the text just like I did a second ago. You're going to go to the hyperlink manager, which looks like this little globe right here. It's going to ask me for the URL, which is the web address. And I think it's breaktown.com. I don't remember. Nope. Ah, that's what it was. So this is not my site, um, which it is worth it to link to sites that aren't yours because, again, that, that shows that um, you kind of play with, well with others on the, the Internet as far as search engines go. So we've got this. I'm going to set the target, and this is very, very key if you are um, linking to a site that's not your own. Um, because this is something that will reduce what's known as bounce rate, which means people leave your site. Um, so we're going to tell it to open in a new window. Save that. Um, OK, so we've talked about how to create links and on that. And then you can also um, I'm going to insert a picture right there. So we can put pictures here. As soon as I rub, yeah. And you can do the little picture guy over there. It'll bring up whatever your file library is, and you can click to upload um, when you want to upload there. And then you just simply choose an image. So let's see, do we have... Hmm. So I'm going to see if we had a image from Bricktown. Which we should. Oh, well. I'm just going to pick one then. We're going to insert it. So... And that's how, that's how you can put in a picture to the site. Um, and it'll automatically kind of adjust to the size because what we use is a, um, a responsive websites. Um, so that's how you can do that. Um, so that pretty much kind of covers the basics there for the content, content editor. Um, and as always, if you need help with any of this or you're working on a page and you kind of get stuck, please call our support team. That's what they're there for. Um, they're happy to help you with that. Um, some things down here that you should be aware of. So we've got our dynamic content, um, which are, if I go to, well, let me, I'm actually going to save what I've done on this page. Save and continue. There we go. Okay. 
We're going to go to, for buyers, relocating to Oklahoma City. That's the page we've been working on. There you go. So, yeah, that picture might be a little bigger than what I wanted to do, but, I mean, that's how you can kind of get it in there. Um, dynamic content are these things here. Um, so, you'll notice I've, I've got some things that I've noted as my featured properties. Um, somebody can do a home search, today's rates, see what those are. Those are all things that you can add um, and are controlled on a per page basis. So you'd be able to just simply um, down here check this box to enable it. You'll be able to customize and then you can use um, the widgets that are in here for that. Um, let's add a lead capture form to this page, shall we? And do you look into buy? Um, so I'm going to do, um, this is where you can, one way you can get lead capture forms on there. I highly recommend putting lead capture forms on all of the pages but the home page. And the reason I don't recommend necessarily putting them on the home page is the purpose behind your home page is to entice people to go deeper into your site where they're going to actually get the information they're looking for. Your home page should, it should be very easy for somebody to glance at it and be able to, you know, click to download an ebook to know where under the navigation they need to go to get the information they're after. Um, really, they shouldn't be spending a lot of time on your home page, to be honest. Um, so, because um, that's one of the number one things that I see when somebody's like, well, my site's not getting any leads. Well, you don't really have any lead capture forms on your site, so that doesn't give somebody a way to contact you. Okay, so we're going to looking to buy. Um, let's set this up to where it's going to automatically respond when somebody fills out the form. And customize that option. Um, you don't want to put the salutation because it'll say, you know, hi, Ashley or hi Ken or whoever um, automatically you know and you can uh, you know, whatever you want. You can even choose to save it as a template and it'll ask you to to name it so you don't have to type it in each each time because the auto responders are set um, on a per page basis as well. So if I was putting this say on a first time home buyers page, I might want them to get a different message rather than something like this where they could just be relocate uh, since they're relocating it may not be their first house. Um, um, okay. And then um, you can either include your signature in the message or have it built dynamically um, by having whatever the information here is. So I would um, probably include the web address just so that way if they're getting it um, through their email, they'll be able to get back to your site and remember, oh yeah, it was, you know, pipeline ROI properties that I saw with Becky and, um, and the information. So that way they've got your web address, phone number for contacting you, um, if you have your cell phone, you can do that too, or if you just want to keep the office. So we're going to save and activate that. Um, and this is where you can set it to go to specific marketing groups. Um, you're not going to have as many as I've got because this is a really big site. And I need to talk to our development guys about getting this cleared out. So we're just going to do g general buyers. Um, the Platinum would be if you had specific lead uh, routing groups from our broker platform. Um, I don't have any built on this, um, 
but that, that's something our support team can help you set up. You have people that work as teams. Um, IDX search, you can check a box and it'll put a IDX search on the page. Listings, if I wanted listings to show on this page. Um, I don't want on this one just because I'm talking about multiple areas and I'd rather them go to those individual areas if they were wanting to get more information. Um, so you just kind of have to think about um, structurally how you want it set up um, a little bit. Wouldn't really mess with the RSS feeds, to be honest, just because um, they, they are a little bit um, outdated there. Um, and you're better off personally using an RSS feed for your own to be able to curate articles to share. Um, Okay, so now that we've kind of covered that, the next page I'm going to show you, thanks for reminding me, Jordan, <laughs> is how to create that ebook landing page. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save and close this. Okay, so um, if you're already in here, you can click on the landing page wizard to get started with creating your ebook, or if you're just after this class, you're just wanting to get in, get started. Um, it's going to actually be under our capture tab, and it's going to be the ebook landing page. So capture ebook landing page because we're capturing their information because we're giving them a, something of value, so they want to give us the information. Aha! Because that's really the key in today's business is people want to make sure that you either got valuable information. Uh, to share before they give you um, their their name and email address. Excuse me a second. Okay, so we're going to click on that. Um, we do have several different options for you to choose from. The way these work is we've already written these books for you. You guys don't have to write them. And we have um, uh, and what it is is somebody, ah, I'm getting ahead of myself again. All right, so let's go look at one of these pages, shall we? Um, let's look at our house not selling because that's usually my favorite example to do. Um, since we've been focusing on buyers, now we're going to shift gear and target some sellers. Yay! Uh, this is the end result of what gets produced when you set up a ebook landing page. It'll have um, an image up here with your title, subtitle, and a very short form for somebody to fill out um, in order to get the ebook. Um, and this is where you can kind of set that expectation of this is the information you're going to be getting in the ebook when we discuss this. Um, so uh, and then it, you've got a place for your headshot and the bio. So let's see, where did that page go? There it is. So to set up a page like the one we just saw, we're going to do uh, seven reasons your home isn't selling. Um, this is where I could change the title if I wanted to, because um, you can see kind of the sample. Um, and you can see, you know, the subtitle. You can even change the points. Um, set the contact group to go to a specific um, group. So sellers is what we're looking at here. Um, button name. Button name, anytime you see that in our platform, it refers to what's going to show up in the navigation. Um, so this is the button name. I want it to say house not selling instead of marketing mistakes just because nobody's really going to understand what's meant by marketing mistakes. Is that your marketing mistakes for my house or that? So I would really, um, this is when I would definitely rename uh, house not selling or something like that that really does catch their attention because, you know, what's the problem? Well, my house has been on the market forever. It's not selling. What's going on? Oh, I can get a free ebook and maybe find some answers to my question. Heck yeah, I'm going to fill that out. Um, 
I'm going to just hit save and close or save and continue. Um, since we've already created this one, I would get an error that says, hey, you've already done this. Um, so um, this is what it would get or what you would get. Um, oh, let me go back to that page because I just realized. Um, the bio right here, that's where that information goes in. Um, because, it, and it, you are limited to 300 characters, um, and one thing I would highly recommend is once you get something here that you like, I would use that on your social media profiles, so for like your, your Twitter, tw wow, cannot talk, Twitter um, profile, um, where it kind of puts your summary there, um, for your Facebook profile, um, let's go to your, you know, for the page, hmm, oh, there it is, you know, so that way you can, um, because you have a kind of an about section, so you can put it there, um, for the short description is probably what I would do. Um, that way it's very consistent across your social media. And so that's another good optimization strategy that's not necessarily on your site, um, but having a, um, a cohesive social media presence or um, if you're filling out business directory profiles, that is very, very key to, to keeping kind of that professional detail and so that way I know that, yeah, this Alex that I found over here on Yellow Pages is the same one that I found on Facebook or Twitter or something like that. Um, and you'll notice we've got the same headshot here um, and the same cover photo as we do, if I go to this, as we do here. Um, so very easy to tell that these are the same person. Um, so, okay. Close that because we don't need brick tent anymore. Um, so let's see some further basics. Let's talk about, because we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, don't know why I just closed out of that. Okay. The other thing that you can do that's probably going to give you some really good return for um, not, no, not really a lot of effort is to create custom lead capture forms that actually tie in really well with the page content. Um, what I mean by that, uh, let me go here, um, skip that. And we're going to go to one of my two favorite pages to talk about, Nine Steps to Owning. Oh, thanks, Jordan. Um, okay, so we've got, you know, here is our Nine Steps to Owning page. If I scroll down here, you'll notice that there is a lead capture form that's just kind of hanging out, ready to be filled out. This really is one of the better ways to have lead capture on your site instead of having things that pop up and interrupt the person when they're expecting to get really good content that's going to be valuable to them and you're asking them for their information before they even know that what you have is going to be valuable. Um, so you can embed those on each one of your subpages. I mentioned that earlier. This one is not one of our stock forms, but it is, um, but I'll show you how to create it. So under capture, website lead form, it's going to bring you here. This is where you can set on a, a per page basis without having to go into each and every page to do it. Um, it looks like we've got them all on these. Um, and again, you do not want it on your home page. You don't need it on your home page. You want them to go to the content that's going to be relevant to them because since you're going to be setting up targeted lead capture, that's going to help you be able to market to them better. So that's another reason not to set it up on your home page. 
the least likely form to ever get filled out, um, and this is just you know industry studies and things like that, is the generic got a question form, just because, you know, um, so yeah, we've got the mortgage savings tips on that one, so we, we'd probably want to change that. Um, but anywho, where we're actually going to go to create these forms, click on Form Manager, um, and if I was creating a form from scratch, I'm going to click on Create a Form. Um, and since, since I've already got them, um, you can tell the custom forms here because I do have um, the edit and delete capacity here. Um, these four are just to get you started. Really, really do want to, you know, hone in on that. So we've got the uh, excited to buy your first home. Pull that up. Pull this up next to it so that way we can kind of look at these side by side. Um, this, this, think about what page you're building this for. So in this example, we, this is the nine steps to owning. Chances are, if you've bought a house, you already kind of know the steps in the process, um, which is why I decided to target this one more at first-time home buyers that are looking at information to buy their first home. Um, so I'm playing on emotion with excited to buy your first home? You bet I am. And... Um, sorry. and then um, kind of playing on that to where you're setting the expectations of if I'm going to give you my name and email address, what am I getting in return or what can I expect to happen um, with those? So you can say, you know, very easily, you know, you're excited about your first home? Great. Fill out this short form contact me, no obligation, and we'll talk about, you know, starting the home buying process. Putting the no obligation in there tells them it's like, hey, you know, if we're maybe not a fit, I can get you to somebody that is, but, you know, at least that way you're kind of that contact of, because um, some people are, are scared to submit the information thinking that, well, wow, if I talk to this one person, I'm locked in with them, you know, even if I want to change agents or something later. So sometimes that using language like that to kind of set set somebody at ease and um, kind of overcome any objections or um, barriers to them wanting to submit the form is usually a good idea. Um, the send lead notifications to, you don't necessarily need to worry about it unless you only have one person in your office that works with first-time home buyers. So you could put in their email address there and any leads from this form would automatically go to them without having to go to whatever the central routing is and then out. If you're one person shop, you don't need to worry about that at all. Um, the, the group name is right here. Um, I, I made it very obvious that yes, you're going to be contacted if you give me the information. Um, and honestly, people like that a lot more um, um, because they know what to expect. That's the very the, that's the very big point that I want to make sure I get across is the more you can set the expectation for what's going to happen if somebody does an action, the more likely it is that you're going to be getting the quality of people that do want to take that next action. Um, we won't be emailing it out necessarily, uh, though, Jordan, if you want to talk to our marketing guy, Hunter, about that, um, I know he's been talking about it, but it will be up on our YouTube channel, um, youtube.com forward slash pipeline ROI. Just look for today's date. Um, I know the one, for, the one from Thursday, I pretty much got to talk about social media for an hour, so that's a pretty in-depth one. Um, okay, so... And each, each one of these fields, um, you get to name it whatever you want. If you want them to have a little bit more space to type, you can click this button. It expands it to a three line. Um, shorter forms get filled out more often just because they're not having to provide a, a war and peace essay <laughs> just to, to get you to contact them. Um, Yes, uh, Joanna, I, I can have uh, someone from our support team follow up with you on that once we find out what's going on with the uh, 
future dates in the analytics that are there. Um, sorry, back to the lead capture form. Um, you can put in the phone number. Uh, I don't even have to have that field. The t you have to have, at most, two fields on your forms. So if you're like, well, I don't have time to create all these lead capture forms. Yes, you do. Just only put it in a name and email, which are the two defaults on there. And um, if you come up with a template or something like that, so if you're tying it into specifically a community of, you know, looking to buy a home in Midwest City, you just switch out the, the city name on that and you can create them and pop them on all of the individual ones. Um, so that's a really good way if you have a larger office and you're wanting to have leads route automatically, um, you can create um, contact groups or marketing groups for certain areas. Um, I won't have time to really cover that in this session. Um, come back Thursday and ask me or you can call our support team and they'll be able to tell you how to set up contact groups or something like that. Um, and on this one, I provided a couple extra fields. I could get rid of this entire section if I wanted to. Um, but that way they know it's, it's optional information because sometimes having it helps, but it's not required to submit the form. The only thing that makes it required is if we put the two boxes here. Um, so I'm going to save that even though I didn't really make any changes. Um, and then you just choose that to embed on there. All right, that, and that's kind of a a first run overview of the, the top things I would probably want to know, um, just site content wise, like how to create the pages, how to get some lead capture on the site, um, and then um, Thursday, if you guys you know, are ready, just because I know this is a lot of information, um, you guys can come back and we can cover some of the things that we didn't go over, like sharing on social media, how to nurture the leads through email marketing, because um, uh, those are kind of the other two halves to this whole, as it were. Um, but yeah, you guys have a great day, um, and uh, Joanne, I'll find out the answer to that question and have somebody follow up. All right, thanks guys.